a 40 year old man presents to your office after noticing a lump in front of his neck that has been slowly enlarging. He denies any other symptoms and upon palpation of the lump you note that it is a non-tender nodule and upon further examination find some cervical lymphadenopathy as well. This finding prompts you as a doctor to become concerned regarding the nature of the tumour and decide to investigate further by ordering a blood test for the thyroid hormone and TSH levels. A fine needle aspiration biopsy for both the lump in his neck as well as in his enlarged cervical lymph nodes and a radioactive thyroid scan. You suspect the lesion may show cytologic features of nuclear crowding and nuclear grooving. This is a case of thyroid carcinoma. So let us discuss few important points about thyroid neoplasm. Thyroid neoplasms are 1% of solitary nodule of the thyroid is malignant. And what is the risk of malignancy? Malignancy risk increases with the solitary nodules. Nodules in younger patients that is the age which is less than 40 years. There is a greater male predominance when compared to that of the female. Head and neck radiation exposure prior that is history of head and neck exposure during childhood. Cold nodules that is nodules do not take up radioactive iodine. All are considered to be etiological factors. So here radiation exposure usually leads to benign thyroid lesions but also increases the risk of papillary carcinoma. Now let us discuss about the benign lesions in which the first one is a thyroid adenoma which is also called as follicular adenoma. This thyroid or follicular adenoma appears as a solitary mass where majority of the patients are asymptomatic with the presence of cold nodules and the capsules are intact in this type of adenoma. There is no change in the thyroid capsules. And what about the various histological types of the thyroid adenoma? The first one is the normofollicular type which is also called as the simple type of thyroid adenoma. Second one is a macrofollicular. The macrofollicular which is the second one it is also called as the colloid adenoma and the third one is a microfollicular which is fetal and next one is a trabecular which is embryonal and the last one is the pseudopapillary strictures. So all these are the histological types. If you see the different variants one is Hartley cell adenoma, atypical adenoma, hyalinizing trabecular adenoma and the adenoma with the bizarre nuclei. All these are the different variants. And if we talk about the malignant neoplasm after benign neoplasms, the malignant neoplasms are totally of four different types. The first one is the papillary carcinoma which is most common when compared to that of all the different types and which is seen approximately in 75% of the cases. And the next one is the follicular carcinoma which is seen approximately in 10 to 20 percent of the cases and the medullary carcinoma is seen in 5 percent of the cases and the least one is the anaplastic carcinoma which is seen in less than 5 percent of the cases. So now let us discuss one by one in detail. So the first one is papillary carcinoma of thyroid and this papillary carcinoma of the thyroid is more commonly seen in females that is between the age of 20 to 40 and it is associated with the radiation to the head and neck particularly during the first two decades of life and this one has excellent prognosis and the root of spread is lymphatic and if we discuss about the family history a history of thyroid cancer in the first degree of relatives or family history of a thyroid cancer syndrome 
that is example like familial polyposis, like corneal complex, multiple endocrineoplasia type 2, Wormer syndrome or Cowden syndrome, all these increases the risk and the mutations or rearrangements in the genes specifically encoding for the proteins in the mitogen activated protein kinase called as MAPK pathway are critical to the development as well as the progression of differentiated thyroid cancer. So this is what you should know about this and second one is the papillary carcinoma of thyroid is the most common type of thyroid cancer what you can see in this image. This neoplasm can be multifocal because of the propensity of this particular neoplasm to invade lymphatics within the thyroid as well as lymph node metastasis extremely common and comprises about 75 to 80 percent of the cases where the true papillae of cuboidal cells with a fibrovascular core is seen which you can clearly see in this image and there is no such a thing as a papillary adenoma and all the papillary neoplasms of the thyroid should be considered malignant and what are the nuclear features and remember that the nuclear features are the diagnostic for papillary carcinoma of the thyroid as you can see in this image. The first one is the orphan ani nucleus right. So this orphan ani nuclei which is optically clear nuclei where the cells of this neoplasm often have a nuclei with a central clear appearance from fixation and next important agnostic feature is the nuclear groups. So the intranuclear pseudo inclusions which are called as the cytoplasmic invaginations into nucleus can be seen as the nuclear groups and others are the samoma bodies. So all these are important diagnostic features of papillary carcinoma of thyroid and the papillary carcinomas are indolent tumors that have a very long survival even when metastasis occurs. So the most favorite site for the papillary carcinoma metastasis is the local lymph nodes in the neck. In fact, some papillary carcinomas may first be detected as a nodal metastasis also. Now even in this papillary carcinoma of the thyroid, we have different variants. The first one what you can see over here is the follicular variant. The follicular variant is the one where the samoma bodies are seen and the papillary microcarcinoma is a second variant. This has an excellent prognosis because one centimeter or less is a diameter of the tumor. And the next one is a diffuse sclerosing variant. This has worst prognosis because widespread lymph node metastasis is seen and most common metastasis is towards lungs. And in this type, there are numerous samoma bodies, there will be a squamous metaplasia, there is a very heavy inflammation and the differential diagnosis with this is Hashimoto's thyroiditis. The next variant is called as tall cell variant. In the tall cell variant, there is abundant eosinophilic cytoplasm, often there is a lymphocytic infiltrate and even this has worse prognosis. And the next variant is called as columnar variant because like tall cell but with nuclear stratification. And the last one which is called as oxyphilic variant like Hurtley cell carcinoma. So all these are the different variants of the papillary carcinoma of the thyroid.